Where are you originally from, and do you still have any connections there? Uh, originally, I'm from Nashua, and I, I was born in, uh, at the Nashua Hospital, and I went to first grade in Nashua. And then when we uh, moved to Litchfield, I started second grade, and I lived there for years until I went to college. And uh, my sister Joan lives in Litchfield, and so does her daughter Heather and you guys. So that's my connection. When did you first realize you had artistic talent and wanted to become an artist? I think it was about five when I thought I, I would really like to be an artist because that was always my most fun thing to do. Uh, we had a neighbor called Newell Carney that lived right near us and he was an artist and he used to look at the stuff I did and he would help me out, you know, give me suggestions on things I could do a little better. And so he was really cool. He, w he was really old at the time, too. But I guess I was about five, and I thought, you know, it would be really cool to be an artist. And that's what I thought I'd do, and that's what I did. What got you first inter interested in art at such a young age? Did you have a favorite, have a favorite well, artist or someone who taught you? You combine those two. Yeah, so. well, Newell Carney was uh, the guy that helped me with the art, but, oh, there used to be a show on TV where a guy, I think it was John Nagy, back years ago, and I used to like to watch that show, and I'd draw along with him when I was real little, but then I started to go just go out and, you know, draw things on location. Like, when I was in the eighth grade, I did a picture of the Litchfield School, which is still hung there. It was uh, one of my first oil paintings. In the art room? Yep. Yep, it's still there. And they've already, uh, oh, had somebody come in and restore it, which is sort of cool. It's, it's neat that something I did has been restored in my lifetime, because I did it over 50 years ago. What kind of education did you need to become an artist? Where did you go to school and for how long? Well, I studied art all four years at Alvern High School, and then I went to the University of New Hampshire in Durham, and I decided that I might like to be an art teacher, because I thought, well, if I teach art, I could still be an artist uh, all my summers and my weekends, and I thought it was sort of cool to be in front of a classroom, and uh, it was nice because I had a steady check, and I had benefits, and if I'd been just an artist, uh, I would have taken my chances. Where did you travel to create and sell your artwork? Oh... After teaching art for three years in both Sunapee and New London, uh, which is not far from here, I live right between Sunapee and New London, I went out to the West Coast, and that's where, really when I started to make my living as an artist. Um, I got my master's degree in art at San Francisco State College back in 1972, and in 1973 it looked like it would be legal to be a street artist. So I decided uh, I might like to try being a street artist. And I thought thousands of people go to San Francisco, and maybe it would be real cool to do San Francisco scenes. So I did 10 San Francisco street scenes, and I had prints of them, and then I used to sign, sign my prints. And I sold them to tourists that were visiting San Francisco from all over the world. And I did that for a number of years. So there's thousands of pieces of artwork that I did somewhere in the world. Why did you become an art teacher in, in addition to being an artist? Now, look at the questions ahead of time, because some of them he's answering as we're going through. Well, 
like I said, uh, the reason I decided uh, to teach art was I figured uh, I liked working with kids and I like sharing stuff that I learned with kids. So I thought being an art teacher would be really cool. And at the same time, I'd get a check year round and I would have benefits like health insurance and that kind of stuff. But when I left teaching uh, in 1969 to go to the West Coast, I, I really didn't think I'd spend 16 years traveling halfway around the world as an artist. So I left teaching in uh, June of 69, and then in, uh, I guess it was September of 85, I got back to teaching. So I took 16 years to travel to places like Europe, where I was an artist. And you asked me earlier about that map up on the wall. That's the island where I lived off the coast of Spain for five years. That was really cool, living on an island. What is the most challenging part about being an artist? What is the most rewarding? I guess the ch most challenging part of being an artist is uh, figuring out how to make a decent living from being an artist. Uh, I have a website and I guess the hard part is getting to people to know that you have a website so they can go there and order your work. Uh, actually doing the, the original artworks, my, the fun part, and then the the work part for me is is then finding a good way to make money from that from the original. Um, years ago, a friend of mine was an artist, and his suggestion was keep your original work until you're old. And he said, sell signed prints of your work, which is what I do. And he said that way you get lots of exposure, and a lot of people know about you. And then when you're ready to sell your originals, when you're a lot older, um, a lot more people know about you. What, was, what were your favorite things to draw? And what is your favorite way to create your drawings? Well, one of the f most favorite things I've, I draw is ships. So it's, uh, it's called nautical art or marine art. And the way I work is to draw using these materials. I use a hard lead pencil. This is a 6H pencil. So when I'm actually working on an original drawing, it's got a hard lead. So when my hand gets in it, I'm, I'm not smudging. You know how a regular pencil, sometimes you get your hand in it and it looks smudgy? Well, when I use a hard lead like this, it doesn't. So I draw everything out in detail, and what I work from is photographs. So let's say, I'll, I'm going to get up and show you something. You want to come over here? One, When I worked on this, this scene right here, Sean, this is how I work. This is the, the scene that I did of the uh, Victory Chimes. It's a big schooner. And I wanted it off Owl's Head Light. So that's Owl's Head Light. That's a pretty well-known lighthouse up in Rockland area. And sometimes I'm out just taking photographs with a camera and I'm filming the movement in the water. So when I did that scene right there, it's based on this photograph, this photograph, and this photograph. And you, the magnifying glass over at my table makes all these look three times bigger. So when I'm drawing, the challenge is taking three different bodies of water and making it look like one seamless body of water that has movement. Does that sort of look real to you, or? Yes, it does. Well, it's based on trying to make this water look real, this water look real, and this. 
But it's sort of through the magnifying glass, it's like putting a puzzle together. So that's what Uncle John, that's the challenge. Uh, I guess my favorite part of marine art now is drawing a moving body of water. And I spend longer doing that than drawing the actual ships. Did that help out, showing you those? But that's how I do it. When I, after I've done a complete drawing in pencil, then I start using watercolor brushes, and I just have a bottle of, you know, I have a little container of water, and what I'm doing is called an, uh, a wash technique. Have you ever done that in school? Well, the idea is you, you wet your brush in water, and then you wet the, the paper on the original. So here's an original that I was doing. And let's say I wanted to tone that area. I wet it with a brush. And while it's wet, I use watered down India ink. And the color is sepia brown. I like the sepia brown because it looks old and antique. A lot of people that do pen and ink just use black ink. And it looks nice. That was a piece I did in black. You see the old guy sitting, the old uh, sailor? I did that in high school, and that's how most people work with ink, and that's how I used to. It was just black ink and a technique called cross-hatching, which was, uh, oh, using line. It was all line work, and to make darker areas, I would cross-hatch. I would have little lines going one way and then little lines going the other way. But now what I do is called a wash technique, so I call these ink wash drawings. And if I wanted to put anybody in that you'd be able to tell who it is, that was my son Christopher. So when I worked on this, I had a nice photograph of Christopher. And this was our cat, Ebony. That was Christopher's cat, Clive. This is my other son, Cody, over here with his uh, jambé, which he plays here in the gallery when they record. And then in the background, there's Uncle Jim and the couple we live, stay with up in Maine. And I'm on the uh, horse, horse and, you know, I'm on the, the buggy. This was Christopher back when he was almost four with his little Elmo and actually almost still upstairs. So I, years ago, I had the idea I wanted to put... Uh, Christopher in this scene because it was never finished. I started this in 1977 and it took me 33 years to actually finish it. So that was Christopher and Elmo's looking over at Christopher when Christopher was 18 sort of making eye contact with him and he's Elmo's thinking, hey I know you. I thought that was sort of cool and Chris is looking over at his former self. So Christopher's in the scene twice. And I call this a time warp on St. Peter because the street that I was working on uh, was St. Peter Street. Not many artists spend 33 years doing something, you think? Is it true that you put um, yourself in all of your paintings? If you look close, yeah, I'm, I'm in pretty much all the scenes, and uh, Uncle Jim's in uh, a lot of the scenes as well. And ever since I had the two boys, uh, Christopher and Cody, since they were little, they've always been in my scenes. So, you know, I look at some of my work when they were just little, and they're just little tiny guys when I did the, uh, oh, scenes like the uh, USS Constitution. I've got great photos of the boys when they went up on deck and they pretended they were shooting the cannons. But I had permission to go on as an artist to uh, take research photographs. And then I had photos of the boys and I thought, boy, it would be real cool to put them in. So they're in all my scenes as well. How do you get special permission to research and go on to those ships? Well, I went to the Constitution Museum. I had done a scene of the Constitution. Uh, oh, it was one of the annual turnarounds on the 4th of July. And uh, I got it in print, and I had it in the museum. 
and oh, they were going to have this big event called Op Sale 200, and it was the 200th anniversary of uh, how long the Constitution had been sailing. And I got permission uh, by a lieutenant commander, Richard Marin, who was organizing this event where it was going to go out on the sail for the first time in 200 years. Well, it was actually, it had sailed, it was about 116 years after it had sailed last. But he invited me on board the USS Halley Burton, which was a big frigate. Uh, and I took research photographs and I was able to do a couple of scenes from that. So now I have three different scenes at the museum in Boston. So if anyone goes to the uh, USS Constitution website and they look under art or signed prints, Uncle John has work there. So you can order them online through the museum or, or through my website, which is uh, kendallinc.com. Years ago, when I used to do street scenes, it, take, it would take me an average of about four or five weeks. Every day I'd go out and I'd sit on the street, and I'd, you know, each day I'd get a little bit more done. But usually it was around four to five weeks. Now that I'm doing uh, nautical art and I'm doing ships, uh, it's all different. I have to sit here in the gallery and work through my magnifying glass. And in hours, uh, they average about 250 hours. Uh, some take longer. Uh, the piece hanging there of the eagle off Portland Headlight was about, I think it was over 350 hours, but it's, it's a really big piece. And when I did the Cologne Cathedral in Germany, I think uh, that was three months, every day for three months. Except one day when it rained, I sat in front of the Cologne Cathedral in, in Germany. And that, that, I guess in hours, I figured out that was over 300 hours of work as well. Plus thousands of miles of commuting. Were you going to ask about this? Yeah. Took long. You said that one took long too. Yeah, I, I did a lot of work on it in 1977, and I guess it was about 80% done. But I had areas that I never finished, and uh, I, I promised myself that when I retired from teaching art, which was in 2010, I'd finally finish that picture. So that's when I added uh, both my sons and Uncle Jim and the people that are friends of ours, Kim and Carl, up in Maine. And uh, so I'm thinking that's probably one that took somewhere around 300 hours with the time I worked on it on the street and then I put an awful lot of time adding people and finishing it here in the gallery in 2010. Um, in 2010 when you retired how many years had you been teaching art and what grade levels? Um, I taught for three years uh, in Sunapee and that was first through 12th I, w I was living in Sunapee, and uh, I commuted Monday, Wednesday, Friday to New London, where I had first through twelfth, and then Tuesday, Thursday, I was in Sunapee. Then I took sixteen years to travel, sort of halfway around the the world, doing the art full time, and selling prints to tourists. And uh, when I took the job in Henniker. It was first through twelfth, but they they uh, uh, built uh, the regional school over in Ware. It was John Stark Regional, mm -hmm. so all the high school kids left about three or four years after I took the job, and uh, I was behind uh, K through eight art, and I was in Henniker for twenty five years, but. This is my 10th year teaching uh, art at night school in uh, Kearsarge. So I'm thinking, I've got, 
I think 31 years in so far as an art teacher. That's a long time. What would a typical day as an artist look like? Well, when I used to do street scenes, I'd get up early and I'd sit on the street and work for a long time. And I'd usually start in the morning and I'd work right through till almost dark. Now, in, sitting in the gallery where I have good lighting and uh, I can, oh, sometimes I'll put in 10 or 12 hours. On certain occasions, I've worked round the clock. I've worked over 24 hours if there was a deadline and I had to get something to a printer. So, it depends. sell your paintings and how much do they sell for? Well, I sell them right here in my gallery and uh, I've got signed prints that are uh, $25, some of them with mats are 30 and then some of the bigger pieces are 80 uh, So far I haven't sold any original work but that's going to be later on and those would be I don't know, way up in the thousands. Do you consider yourself to be a famous artist? Have you ever been on TV or radio? Um, I don't consider myself famous. Unfortunately, a lot of artists aren't considered famous until they die. You know, once you're not around to do any more art, then they figure, well, gee, now your work's really worth a lot because you're not going to be doing any more. But I have been on uh, TV and radio. I was on uh, Chronicle uh, on Channel 9. And they came and uh, spent, oh, a good couple of hours uh, taking, you know, filming me through a big uh, camera. And uh, they did a nice piece that was on Chronicle. And then a couple of months later, I was on... Uh, New Hampshire Public Radio, and I did a nice thing. And actually, I'll give you a CD of that if you want to listen to it at home. I found a copy for you today. And it was the radio interview, and it was a show called uh, The Front Porch with uh, John Walters. And uh, he used to interview all sorts of cool people that did unusual things, and he thought the fact that I had traveled a lot as an artist and I always worked in brown ink was interesting so it was uh, sort of uh, questions about like you're asking me questions he said I'm just gonna ask you questions and let's just talk and they've it we ended up on radio and it, it sounded pretty cool what if you could choose any other career besides artist, what would it be and why? When I was younger, I thought, well, I really love playing baseball. I played baseball from the time I was in maybe fourth grade right through high school. I was on the varsity baseball team at Alvern uh, uh, all four years. And I was a pretty good baseball player, and I thought, geez, you know, if I wasn't an artist, maybe it would be cool to be a professional baseball player. Other than that, I can't really think of anything I would seriously think about doing. I just started baseball in fourth grade. Yeah. See? <laughs> and he's a good artist. <laughs> yeah, well, see, you got choices to make. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? No, I did them all. Okay, so what do you say? <laughs> did I answer them right? Yep. All right, cool. <laughs>